Warning, this video will be minimally edited. So, can Empty Void beat Garo now? Let's talk about that real quick. I'll be talking about current Void from the latest chapter as of the making of this video versus P Cosmic Garo from the end of the Saitama fight. The main arguments I see putting Void over Garo go as follows. First, Void as a human was already way stronger as a vessel than Garo the time he got his cosmic powers, and Void actually took God's hand unlike Garo, so he would have gotten more power. This is reiterated in the latest chapter as well by Void calling Garo a broken creation. Second, Void absorbed Cosmic Garo's powers by default making him Cosmic Garo plus himself and therefore meaning he is stronger than Garo. Three, Blast says a threat greater than Garo is imminent and it's implied he's referring to Void here. Fourth, Void is showing himself being relative to or being stronger than Blast, who could react to, outspeed, teleport and temporarily contain Saitama and Garo's serious punch clash. Fifth, Garo struggles to master time manipulation, meanwhile Void exists outside of the causality of the universe itself, therefore meaning Void has a much higher level of god powers than Garo and should win. And six, Void's abilities give him an overwhelming edge over Garo, with the Dimension Slash in particular being an instant one-shot. There are more, but these are the main ones. Now let's break all this down and see if these arguments are enough to place Void over Garo at his peak. I'll save the first argument for last, as that one sort of needs the others addressed first before I can talk about it. So starting with the second argument, Void absorbed Garo's power. The thing is, yes, he did absorb Cosmic Garo's power, but the version of Garo we are seeing here is nothing in comparison to Garo at his peak. Remember, Garo right here, getting his power absorbed, hasn't even copied the Serious Punch yet, much less went through his exponential growth on Io. We also have to remember that Void looks old and shriveled up here, so I'm not sure how much power he himself brings to the table while this weakened as it seems that it was Garo's power that replenished him back to full health, and back to a state where he would be able to fight. Think about it, Void was implied to be so weak here that he wasn't even battle ready. It's really Garo that restores him to full power. If anything, this is an argument for why Void wouldn't scale to Garo to speak, because most of his current power comes from a much weaker version of Garo. Void is literally just this early version of Cosmic Garo given more unique hex abilities via this line of scaling. The third argument about Blast thinking Void is a bigger threat than Garo falls into the same trap as the second. Blast has only seen the Garo that performed the Gamma Ray Burst and then got instantly folded by Saitama. Remember, present Blast hasn't fought Garo yet. He doesn't know about Garo's copying ability, he doesn't know about Garo's growth from the other timeline, he just knows this Garo, who hasn't copied Spatial Manipulation yet, and who hasn't copied the Serious Punch, and who hasn't grown exponentially on Jupiter's moon. Blast is saying Empty Void is a greater threat than this baby Cosmic Garo. It doesn't mean at all that Void would scale over Garo at his peak. For this is where things get a little more serious argumentation-wise. When Saitama and Garo go for their clash, Blast utterly blitzes them. He reacts to them, monologues in his mind, leans forward, puts his hands together, and teleports them away all in the time that they take to connect. And it almost seems like the two of them are moving in slow-mo compared to Blast. Then Void scales to Blast, putting him way higher in terms of speed than Garo or Saitama. This has always been super strange to me ever since the chapter originally came out, as if Blast could just do this, then why didn't he instantly blitz Garo at the start of their fight? People say he was holding back to protect the Earth, but he wants to get Garo off-planet as soon as possible. If he could blitz him, he would do that instantly and get him to some other place before going there himself. But no, he spends time fighting Garo. He is also not fast enough to save Genos from Garo despite being right there and watching the scene unfold. And then out of nowhere, he's fast enough to blitz bloodlusted Saitama. Yes, I think Saitama is bloodlusted here. But let's take this feed and roll with it. Blast's absolute best speed showing is blitzing Saitama and Garo. He's doing his best to save the earth and gritting his teeth and sweating and with veins on his forehead and everything, so there is absolutely no reason for him to be holding back. Blast is going full speed here, and anything else is raw headcanon. I want to reiterate, 
There is absolutely no reason whatsoever for Blast to be holding back here, and there is plenty of supporting evidence for him going full speed here. You would not believe the kind of stuff I hear about this sometimes. Moving forward with this, Saitama and Garo get sent to Ayo where they do battle, growing stronger and stronger to the point that the narrator states their rate of growth soared exponentially. Exponentially meaning it literally had to be at least multiplied by itself, or in other words, squared. This is utterly insane, and if Saitama grew exponentially and Garo was keeping up for a while, that puts both of them way beyond a blitz tier above their previous selves. Speed and strength in One Punch Man usually go hand in hand late in the series, with the only evidence showing otherwise being extremely early on in the manga. Usually if someone is stronger, they're also faster. Sage is like the only exception in the last couple arcs. So yeah, Garo at his peak should casually blitz blast. Again, an exponential amp is far greater than a blitz multiplier, but even disregarding the exponential stuff and just looking at the graph visually, we can use pixel scaling and see that Garo grew bare minimum 24.7 times, which is well over a speed blitz tier, and would make Garo considerably faster than Blast and by extension Void. This is also without mentioning that Blast's fist bump, teleport, might actually be a blitz tier above his own movement and combat speed, but this bleeds into the argument 6. Argument 6 now is that Void can beat Garo via hacks, most primarily via dimensional slash, which is stated to ignore distance, energy and size, and is outside of causality, and that is blatantly contradicted multiple times. We see Flashy Flash is able to react to and warn Sonic of an incoming attack while Empty Void is already mid-swing to perform his dimension slash. But okay, maybe Void was being super casual here, he's in base 2 and Flashy just precogged it, you know, he knows it's coming, whatever. Maybe the slash only becomes instant when Void has completed a swing or something. Well, in that case, we have several instances of Blast reacting to the dimensional slash as well. But okay, maybe he can sense it coming and move preemptively. Yeah, maybe he can sense it, but he certainly doesn't need to move preemptively. As we see when Void initiates a dimensional slash and Blast's hands are down by his sides, and he's definitely not in the middle of teleportation here. We also see that Sonic and Flashy Flash are behind him, yet in the next panel he has already grabbed them and teleported away. And he has reacted to the dimensional slash, he has bumped his fists together as stated he needs to do, grabbed Flashy Flash and Sonic, and teleported, all in the time it took for the slash to reach him and the ninja duo. Speaking of, we actually do see that the dimension slash moves and covers a distance each time it's used. We see twice that it begins as an explosion in the ground, sort of, and then moves toward the target. So that throws a pretty big wrench into the slash ignoring distance, as it has to cover distance, we see that on panel. And it has been stated that to what extent the dimension slash ignores distance is dependent on the subject, on the avatar using it in other words, so Void probably just can't bring out the full potential of this attack. When used by God, sure, it might ignore all those factors, distance, energy and size, but with Empty Void that is clearly not the case, or at least not fully. But back to how the Dimensional Slash would interact with Garo, Void actually says Blast won't be able to dodge out of the way of it without his teleportation powers, which is weird considering that to teleport Blast needs to bring his hands together, and we literally saw him do that and teleport while the Slash was traveling towards him. So we clearly can move with some level of relativity to the Dimension Slash physically, yet it seems he can't move enough to dodge the radius of it I guess. But whatever the case may be, P. Cosmic Garo literally has the same teleportation as Blast and he is faster in reaction speeds and movement speeds, so he should just be able to react to and teleport out of the way. Even if he can't and he takes serious damage the first time it's used, he can always heal. Unless the Slash completely deletes him, Garo will just regenerate and adapt. Speaking of which, the moment Void travels outside of the universe, Garo will follow. The moment Void tries to use the Dimensional Slash, Garo can literally copy it and probably enhance it like he does all his other techniques. So yeah, Garo is just perfectly suited to defeat Void. Now back to argument 5, Void seemingly has a higher level of time manipulation than Garo. But like... Does he really though? He says he exists outside of the causality of the universe, but he clearly still abides by it. 
Nothing he's shown so far indicates anything remotely close to him actually bypassing causality entirely. Again, we literally saw that his dimension slash has a cause and effect and a duration of time, and that's like the fastest move he has seemingly. Even him cutting Blast's arm off in the last chapter was due to him twisting his body backwards and catching Blast by surprise, so like... I guess if you think Blast is outside of causality too, then maybe? But we know for a fact Saitama is faster than these guys. I mean, come on, you really think Void could beat Saitama? Even currently or before exponential growth? Because Garo, we straight up see on a graph, would beat up Saitama from the start of their battle. He was going band for band with him for a good while, and yeah, Saitama was only using one arm, but that doesn't mean that he was only using one infinieth of his power with it. But that's a topic for a whole other video. TLDR is, if you think Void beats P. Garo, then that means in my eyes you also think Void beats any version of Saitama before his exponential growth on Io. Which I will let you decide if you think is consistent with the series or not. Also, even if you do think Void has infinite or inaccessible or immeasurable speed or whatever level of speed you want to grant him due to being able to get out of the causality of the universe, Blast scales to him blatantly, and Garo scales above Blast in speed, so that would just mean Garo scales there too. Literally, whatever feats Empty Void gets, until we get confirmation that he is exponential Garo level, Garo will just upscale from it. Like, literally, Void could erase the universe next chapter and, like, travel across different dimensions via speed alone and, like, reach whatever levels of speed narratively he is below Cosmic Garo, as he is relative to Blast, who Garo is far above, any way you look at it. Literally anything that happens to Void just upscales Garo currently, unless Void absolutely demolishes Blast no difficulty whatsoever, and we get confirmation that he is exponentially greater than Blast, which I doubt is going to happen. And lastly, back to argument number one, Human Void was a way stronger vessel than Garo, and he took more power from God, therefore he's stronger. Sure, he's stronger than initial Garo, definitely still not stronger than Peak. P Cosmic Garo was the result of him copying an ever-growing, ever-evolving Saitama, not the sliver of power he took from God initially. Not saying God isn't far stronger than Garo, obviously he is, but just that Garo evolved far past the initial slice of power he took from God. Meanwhile, it's also unquantifiable how strong Human Void was 15 years ago. Blast implies he's gotten way stronger since then, and even after Void took God's powers originally, Blast was still relative enough to him to be able to beat him somehow. So maybe Human Void just wasn't all that. Maybe he wasn't as strong as Blast, he was definitely... He definitely should logically be weaker if Blast could still beat a monsterized god amped Void somehow. Like sure, Void was technically stronger, but Blast still did something to beat him, he still had to be at least a little bit relative. And maybe Void just isn't anywhere near as good of a vessel of power as Garo. After all, it is implied and stated that the amount of power one can gain from God depends on one's power and potential. That's why a homeless man with probably very little potential only grew strong enough to maybe bust a continent or a moon at best. Meanwhile, Garo grew to a level where he could- Blast just three years ago seemed to be struggling with Elder Centipede. It's implied the battle was hard fought and long. It's said multiple times that Blast and Elder Centipede fought, so it likely wasn't just one single exchange, and we see the city destroyed behind them, and Blast is bleeding, and I honestly don't know how this makes any sense whatsoever, but that's kind of a sentiment I share with all of recent One Punch Man, so whatever. So yeah, Void could just be a far worse vessel than Garo, and Garo grew far past his initial power from God, so I don't think this argument works either. Overall, I think I've made my stance on this topic pretty clear. I'll probably do a more in-depth video on this topic once the current arc is over if there's anything more to talk about, as there is still a lot more to say, but currently I think Garo at his peak beats Void mid-difficulty at absolute most. And yeah, other than that, let me know if you enjoyed this sort of uh, shorter, less edited video. I'll try to do these once a week now to keep up with the schedule a little bit, give you guys more to watch from me so that the channel isn't completely dormant. I'm working on longer videos in the background, specifically what if Boros turned good, it is coming, but uh, I'll be making these shorter videos in the meantime. 
By the way, this is definitely by far the longest of these shorter videos, as there was way more to talk about than there will be with the other topics that I will cover. I'm not sure what the other topics will be yet, so feel free to suggest something in the comments and I might cover it in one of these shorter videos. And yeah, I'll be posting these less edited ones once a week. And yeah, other than that, I have a lot, a lot of ideas for power scaling videos for One Punch Man and beyond, but those are gonna have to wait. For now, I'll be focusing on these shorter videos and also mainly on what if Boros turned good. I plan to release several parts and then do one more big power scaling video. And then afterwards, I'll continue releasing parts until the season ends and then I'll cover all these other power scaling videos that I want to cover. And with nothing else to say, I wish you a great rest of your day. Goodbye.